The next step is to make the lever that's going to go into the split boards. But before getting stuck into the book, I'll just show you what the finished product is going to look like. It'll look like this, but it'll be blue instead of green. The snap in the spring isn't super strong because everything's scaled down, so the spring isn't as strong as a large spring back. The head cap like this is harder to form in cloth than leather. Leather molds really nicely and cloth doesn't have that same molding capacity. But it turns out okay. Now I'm afraid I didn't get the book finished this week. Well, I did get the book finished this week, but I couldn't get it all into one video. So there will be a third part next week. Now to make the lever rigid, I'm going to add some manila card. Now this is one of the rare cases when you want to use the material with the grain direction perpendicular to head to tail. This is to make the lever more rigid. I'm going to make the lever about a quarter of the width of the book. So I'll work out what a quarter of the width of the book is. And then I'll cut out two lengths of manila card. Uh, so the card goes from head to tail. So 45 millimeters. So I'll cut a piece 90 millimeters wide and then cut that in half. Now the outer sheet is sort of the waste sheet, which is going to become the lever. So I'm going to uh, glue the manila card to that. Now I'm going to put the adhesive on that outer white. I want the lever to, if it is going to have tension in it, I want the tension uh, towards the inside of the book. I don't want the lever curling out. So I always want to apply the adhesive on the side towards the book. So I put it on the white and then I put the card down. I leave a very small gap, about two millimeters from the spine of the book, just enough so there's a bit of flexibility. Cut the tapes to the width of the manila card or maybe a fraction shorter. Uh, paste those down. Now I'm going to fold a little strip over at the fore edge. You can get really uh, clever with this if you're doing a lot of books the same size and I'll explain that in a moment. So just fold that over about an inch. I've done it about an inch wide but uh, if I was better at judging it I'd do it wider and I'll explain why in a moment. Now I'll uh, do the half towards the spine and then I'll fold this over in half. Now I only do the half towards the spine again because that's the side that's towards the book. So that'll pull in and tension the spring, the lever, sorry, towards the book. Now that little um, strip that I'd folded over at the fore edge is now right at the spine side of the lever, making that even thicker or stronger. So if I judge that just right, then that lever would now be um, just over a quarter of the width of the book and I wouldn't have to trim it down later. But because uh, I uh, didn't quite judge that right, I'll trim it down a bit. I'll do the other side now. Now I'll put a moisture barrier between these levers and the text block and some blotters either side and then just leave them under some light weight to dry.
Once the glue's set up for a couple of hours, I'll take the blotters out and just open the book up on the bench and let it dry out completely that way. Now the split board's been left open about a third of the width of the book, so the lever which is going to go into the split board has to be less than that. So I'm going to cut the lever back to a quarter of the width of the book. Now you'll see that the thickness of the lever steps down towards that fore edge. If uh, it was still quite thick at the fore edge, you could even pare the edge or even sand the edge so that there's no uh, sign of the lever uh, pressing through the split board. Now I've just measured the um, distance around from edge to edge of the lever and we're going to reinforce the spine with some book cloth. So I've got some uh, buckram here and I measured it. it's 120 millimeters around. Traditionally a strong leather would be used for this reinforcing. So I'm going to cut three strips of buckram, one for each end and one between the tapes. So this reinforcing doesn't go over the tapes. So I'll just measure it directly onto the cloth from the book. Now this reinforcing is called um, clothing, uh, C-L-O-T-H-I-N-G. So I think that uh, English trade binders would have called it clothing. I have read in a book somewhere, they said it was pronounced C-L-O-W-T-H-I-N-G, which I assume they meant was clothing, not clothing. But I can't remember where I read that. It was probably in Vaughan. Now I normally do this on the edge of the bench but I just could get a good camera angle and I just couldn't demonstrate it very well so I've decided to do it in this press because I can spin it around quickly and, and uh, just get better angles to show what I'm doing. However, I think breaking my routine has caused me to forget a step and I should have put an extra layer of, of adhesive, of PVA, on the spine at this step. So. Um, don't do what I'm doing here, just uh, put a layer of um, PVA on the spine over the tapes. Now I will go back and, and put some PVA over the tapes later. Now make sure this is down firmly over the um, head and tail of the book because you will be able to see this when the book opens and the text box block springs forward. So you really don't want that cloth um, having any gaps against the spine. Now I didn't really check the grain direction of this piece of cloth. Um, you don't want too much stretch uh, across the spine because that stretch is going to be always pulling the um, cut boards against your spring so it's probably best to have the grain direction in the cloth running head to tail work the cloth down really well on either side of the kettle stitch Now when I did measure the distance around from the edge of the um, lever to the other lever, I did do it so that there would be, the cloth didn't go right to the edge. This added to that step down feature a little bit, but uh, I must have the grain direction wrong on this cloth because it did stretch a little bit and ended up being pretty close to the edges. It shouldn't be a big issue.
that's what you get when you grab the first scrap piece of cloth out of your scrap bin and forget to try and work out the grain direction. Now here I'm going back and, and putting some uh, PVA over the tapes. Uh, again, I should have glued up the whole spine before, before I put on that clothing. Now finally we're going to get on to making the spring. Now most spring backs that are larger than this, you would have the spring extend at least 8 millimeters onto the lever. Because this is a smaller book, I'm only going to go 5 millimeters. So I'll add a thicker part of the book over the sewing, over the tapes. I'll put marks either side 5 millimeters on and measure how far around that is. Now it's a little bit less than 50 millimeters, but the lever is not going to hug right up against the spine of the book. So I want to add a little bit uh, to go that extra distance. It's going to be about a millimeter away at least, and as it goes to the uh, ratio of pi, uh, adding three millimeters seems like a good idea. So I'm going to use a single piece of 1.6 millimeter gray board for this spring. So I've wet it down with water and I'm going to put it into a plastic bag to let it absorb that water and soften up. I'm going to get one of my dowels that's around the same thickness as the book. The text block is 30 millimeters thick so I'm using a 30 millimeter dowel and I've just taped a bit of um, craft paper to that. Now that the grey board is softened up, I'm going to just roll that up into the onto the dowel inside the craft paper, and then I'm going to leave that for at least 10 minutes to uh, take on that shape. I'm going to line the inside of the spring with a piece of strong paper. I'm using this Permalife paper which has a high cotton content and I'm only going to line the inside of the spring so I'm going to measure a strip that's 20 millimeters wider than the grey board so 70 millimeters wide same length I've experimented a lot with adhesives for the spring. I've tried using paste and paste mix for this. The problem with that is that they it slips too much. So when you go to roll up the spring again uh, on the dowel, then you end up with um, sort of creases in the paper and the PVA grabbing uh, works really quite well. Now one of the tricks is to get nice crisp turns around the edge of the spring. So you just have to work that carefully um, as you're putting it on. Now I only line the inside of the spring because I want the pull of the paper pulling the spring closed. I have tried wrapping the spring completely I've tried wrapping it so that you end up with two layers of paper on the inside of the spring and I've just found this to give the best results. So I just uh, have 10 millimeters outside on each edge and a complete layer of paper on the inside and I try and make sure there's absolutely no bubbles. If you don't get this paper down perfectly then it will delaminate as it's drying.
Once you're happy with that, roll it back up on the dowel inside the craft paper. And I like to leave it an hour or two so that that PVA sets up really well and it starts to get a bit stiff so that you can start to shape the spring into its final shape. Now the final shape you're after is sort of a C shape or a clamp shape with the uh, edges of the spring sort of acting like a bit of a clamp and I just use my fingers to mold it into the final shape that I want. Now if you haven't left it in the on the dowel long enough then the paper will slip and it'll end up a mess and you have to start again. Now, if you leave it too long um, then it'll have gone too stiff. Now um, Daniel Ibbett of um, Books and Boxes has shown me the trick that you can uh, put uh, this spring over some heat and even though it's PVA um, this traditional way of softening a spring just over a, um, a gas flame just the heat and the moisture from the flame will soften, up, soften it up enough so that you can do this shapening step. Once you get the shape close to where you think you want it, check it on the book. And once you're there, then it's a matter of leaving it dry. Uh, I like to use a couple of bricks to uh, keep it in shape. And I, I push it in so that it's tighter, uh, a tight fit over the spine of the book. So you have to actually um, force it onto the spine of the book. Now you want this spring to be absolutely dry before you start putting it on the book. So I'll leave it between the bricks overnight and then the next morning I will put it out in the sun and normally a day in the sun will dry it out really nicely and it will be really nice and rigid and a tight fit over the spine of the book. Next week I'll pick up at cutting tabs in the lever and attaching the spring and we'll finish the book. So if you're enjoying the series of videos please hit the like button and the subscribe button and I'll talk to you next week.